Uh, can I say which format is tougher to learn, master, cash, or spins? Uh, oh, to master, I mean, to learn, mm, I mean, it's a, it's a difficult question because there's, there's difficulties in both. And we've got a, I'm just again, and we've got ourselves a TNT Horst 007. So we'll see how uh, he's doing. No information on this guy yet, but we'll have a quick look on the leaderboard. Okay, played a little bit. No idea. I'm uh, going to start with Limp. Flop a flush draw. I'm going to start with a check. Can definitely bet this as well. Um, I'm gonna start with check. He comes out firing 90%. Pretty quick bet. Hello, coin spin, by the way, and thank you for the good luck messages. We're gonna start with a call. 10 space is very nice. We're gonna start with a check. I'm assuming he's got quite a lot of King X in his range. And so if he comes out firing with another 90% or something, he comes out half pot now. So definitely going to raise this. The question is how much. We do have the gut shot straight flush draw as well, which means the seven of spades is not a live card. Actually going to go slightly bigger because I think it was king x is inelastic, and I think with his king x and spade or nine x and spade or ten x and spades is very inelastic. So we're going to go slightly bigger here. It's also pretty inelastic with any jack or queen of spades. We're obviously calling it off here. He's got a king. Pretty nice. I'm pretty happy. Happy days. And we'll raise the king five. Uh, Pete uh, 95 Zoom Hello to you uh, Can I say which format is tougher to learn Master, cash or spins uh, oh, To master I mean to learn mm, I mean it's a, it's a difficult question because there's, there's Difficulties in both um, I would say if you were trying to become a profitable player Depends on the stakes as well. Um, but spins, let's say initially spins, there's a little bit more of a, a formulaic approach you can sort of learn. A sort of systematic kind of rigid rigid structure, if you like, in terms of pre-flop and, and various post-flop uh, kind of thresholds, which you, you can kind of learn to, to master the game at, at the lower stakes and probably get you winning sooner in terms of the... It's, it's less of a broad scope of skills uh, initially, but I would say at the top end, it's very tricky in terms of, um, I mean, top game cash is also really tricky, not to discredit that as well. Um, but I mean, like, I don't, I don't, like, I've been learning spins, let's say, for six years now, and it's, it's not something I think will ever master, if you like. Um, but yeah, um, you can definitely be profitable at least. And so that's obviously a good sign. Uh, Tveki Tveki. Powdies asks for the uh, for the Vex me. And um, yeah. Kartivit Draugs. Well done. Very late. He's staying up late, isn't he? Asks. Uh, and 20 Ultras. I have played a few, yeah. Um... um whether they'll be considered national play four tables, I would imagine so. I think eh, it's tough to say. It will depend on the, again the regs um, that are about, and it may not be all the time. And, and if you're playing peak or off peak hours, that'll be different as well. Um, but uh, I played a little bit of twenty ultras. I play one. I always play one towards the end of the stream. Uh, but I might play high ultras now as well. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, limp fold and the queen three suited. Uh, what kind of ROIs are possible at like the 20... Uh, hello to Phelps, by the way. Um, what kind of ROI uh, is possible at like the $20 Ultras? Depends, again, on how many tables you're playing, how much you're game selecting. Um, there's definitely profit to be had. Uh, pre rate back, I would say, if you're not game selecting, if you're playing a lot of volume, my opinion is it's going to be very hard to, to win pre rake back. You can maybe, if you're if you're really really good, break even. I would guess at the twenty twenty dollar ultras. If you're currently doing better than rake back, as in if you're currently winning the games without rake back, you're you're smashing the games. I would say. Um, interesting raise at fourteen bigs here. 
uh, 14.7 I guess that's pretty reasonable um, but yeah I think uh, basically you can kind of look look to your rake back and, and that would be have yourself as a sort of break even as a default and then your rake back will be a good indicator of the ROI so I think it's 5% or 6% rake at the 20s I can't remember which one it is is it 5 or 6% but if you make you know 40% rake back you can maybe make 2 to 2.5% two ROI uh, at the 20s and obviously the higher up you go the lower the achievable ROIs can be I've been very autopilot these games <laughs> but um, it's working out okay I fired through a lot of questions there uh, okay so he comes out um, with a min pro which is interesting from his perspective there is some room to raise here there is also room to call I don't want to raise and have to fold but I think if he raises, he's, he's unlikely to, to be shopping, sh shipping over here. And I think he would just size up. He plays a lot of tables, I know. So I think he would just size up um, more with his with his 3x. Because of the amount of tables he plays, he has to play in a much more sort of formulate way. And so it's a little bit of an exploit that I think works quite well. Um, and yeah. Worked out in this case. Maybe not. I don't know. We have to be cautious, obviously. But happy days, as I like to say. We'll check back the 10 queen off. And then... We face a pretty quick check from him. Check call looks pretty good to me. I expect him to delay quite a bit on this turn card. Uh, he comes out delaying. Again, uses this one big blind sizing. Again, we can maybe discount some of the kings, but we have a pretty nice hand to, to check or turn. And then assess rooms, obviously. Um, and see see how things look. I think we're probably just going to check call that river. Um, in terms of his limpid range, he may delay, for example, some 9x. He might delay some queen x. He bets one bb here again. You wouldn't expect it too often to be a king x. It could be, could be a weak jack x. That's certainly possible. Jack three, jack two. It could be a worse ten x though. He could be just value betting ten nine here maybe. But for one big blind, we're just calling. Uh, and he doesn't have a weaker four at ten x. So happy days. With five point eight, we're just going to shove our ace four. Run into king five. Flop into pair. Good news. Good news. Keep it going. Uh, what chip of these achievable at 20s ultras? Um, I would say 20 ish, 25. Don't, 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 Thank you very much for the follow. Don't. Um, I'm 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 not the best qualified to give an answer to that. It, that would be my best estimate, Peter. So there will be other people who have better ideas because um, I don't have I don't work too too much with too many guys at the twenties these days. Um, but I would imagine twenty to twenty five seems kind of the top end of what could be achievable. And I would say like fifteen to twenty is probably a bit more standard. Uh, yeah, probably. Again, I'm slightly guessing. Okay, we get Chilla, Chilla, Chilla Kill, uh, who um, has been snap checking here. Should we just try him in bet? Let's just try. See if we can. Uh, okay, good. It's an over bluff, but uh, I think it's okay to take a little over bluff there. Chilla Kill 3x called off a King Queen, which seems very, very reasonable. So far, very competent, if you like. I uh, will stab this jack for off against an unknown. So I don't know, don't know anything about Chilla Kill um, in terms of my notes or anything. Um, so we're just going to play kind of a ABC game until we gather some more information or or figure out what he's doing or any uh, any inclinations of his of his um, uh, tendencies. Okay, that's a big ISO. Um, Okay, so he likes the kind of one-to-one -one SPR like thing. We're calling with 10 jacks suit clearly, and then just gonna fold here. Interesting sizing he picked, but can be reasonable. Sixes will be a get in if he raises, but he folds. Okay, we'll call Queen Jack as well. It's a good flop. I'm gonna check this one back. Just, mm, I mean, I hate checking so much, but we're gonna try it. Maybe it's worked out. Comes up for a min bet. 
I don't know about raising this. I think I think I think we'll go for a small raise here because I think it'll be pretty inelastic with some 10x, some king x, obviously, 10 jack, etc., etc. Um, and now the river comes, and I think you can have 7 8 here, for example. You could have also quite a lot of bluffs potentially. So I'm going to go for a small bet with the hope that we can maybe induce uh, uh, looking like king x. And he might choose to raise with, say, a jack x, a queen x, a 7x, an 8x, a 9x, 7 8. And also make sure we get caught by 10x there as well. Or weaker king x. Um, and he had weaker king x. So we probably could have got more against his exact hand, but I think against his range, I'm happy with, uh, with um, our. our sizing there um, did I say one thank you for the follow one and thank you I don't know if I did but thank you if I've missed you I'm already rambling don't, 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 and uh, recreational like the dong. thank you very much for the follow there is a recreational that plays on the party you know at the high stakes I don't know if that is you but welcome if, if that is you come and say hello I'm gonna uh, what are we doing here we're check calling I guess is there a big difference between a $10 and $20 stakes? Some. Um, I've not played any 10s. But, for years. But, I mean, 20s, there's obviously regs. Uh, it's just going to exploit fold this. I'd rather call with a hand like H7, for example. 8x with a spade, jack x with a spade, 9x with a spade, anything. I mean, not 9x with a spade, but, you know, 9 jack, 9 7, anything like that. And 10 fours. Yeah, pretty low down, I think, in terms of our actual playability on, on that board. Chalk15 ambitiously asked for labels. Uh, we are yet to be that established in uh, Twitch, but I can make a note, Chalk, and maybe one day in the future we'll have we'll have labels. I'll tell you what, I'll do that, I'll do that now. Okay, so now we have an interesting spot. I think we're going to go certainly for more value on the turn. Um, pretty happy to go with three big blinds or something. If he's going to speed, I think actually at this point we're just going to end up calling off. But I think he's going to have a lot of like 2-4, two, 2-3, four, 2-4, two, uh, two, two, four, five, four, five, three, five extra spade, 2 extra spade, any of those combos. Of course you're going to flush, of course you're going to have straight, of course you're going to have 2-pair. But with the price we're getting against 2-pair for example, we're just getting the right price anyway. And I'm hoping he's maybe got a hand like 5 extra spade, maybe. He's got a flush though, which is not great. So that didn't work out. But, okay. Thank you. 